Don't go on your next hunt without knowing why you might miss. Get your free copy of Shot Placement 101 today. Details at ClosingTheDistance.com Welcome to this week's Closing the Distance. It's a fun one today. We're chasing hogs out of a helicopter. We've got a really simple can cooker recipe, and we've got a big buck with pro staffer Scott York. Let's get started. Closing the Distance is brought to you by Ozonics. Undetectable, undeniable. Hunter Safety System, dedicated to saving hunters' lives. Executioner Broadheads, born to kill. Treason, don't just blend, become and by Citadel, revolutionary shoot-down shape. Coming up, we have pork, shrimp, and venison on the menu. Closing the Distance will be right back. Closing the Distance is made possible by Matthew Solocam. Catch us if you can. Tree Limb Quivers. There's only one tree limb quiver. Sword Sights. Sharp Solutions in Aiming. Elusive Wildlife Technologies. Taking the elusive out of wildlife. The Stage Deer Attractant. Finally, a synthetic scent that works. And by the amazing Luminoc. Can your arrow knock do this? Welcome back to Closing the Distance. Every year down in South Texas, we do a deer survey and a deer census out of a helicopter. And every year there's always coyotes or hogs or something that we see from the air that we try to go back and take care of with a shotgun. And we knew going up this year that there were three hogs on the ranch that we never could close the distance on with our bow. They were always nocturnal, but we knew where they hung out most of the time around this big pond. We located them on the GPS during the deer census, went back up with a shotgun to take care of these three hogs. It's late January. We're flying with Dusty Holt of Holt Helicopters. I'm running camera. Doc Spock has a shotgun. This hog hunting is gonna be a lot of fun. The number one reason why helicopters are used in predator control is that it's fast, safe, and simple. You can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. The reason for predator control is to increase your fawn survival. The more fawns you have on your ground, the greater the chance to grow a trophy buck. And yes, hogs kill fawns too. Okay, we're down at the Rockendale Ranch. Uh, we're gonna do a helicopter flight after some varmints. We know we have some hogs on the ranch and some coyotes. Uh, loaded up with some double lot buckshot, nine shot, and got up and went straight to where we saw the hogs uh, uh, during the deer count. Uh, it was really nice. We, we got over there and they were all three together. Trying to film a hunt out of a helicopter is really fun, but, it, but it's really tough and challenging for a cameraman. I've done it for the last eight or nine years, and sometimes I do okay with it. Sometimes I, it's a total bomb. I, I, don't get, I don't get that great footage. But if, if you've flown or done a helicopter hunt before, you know what I'm talking about. If not, uh, just to imagine trying to film yourself riding a roller coaster. Uh, get, get out your phone. And, and just look at the screen on your phone while you're on a roller coaster ride. That's kind of the comparison that I can think of of, of trying to get good footage out of a helicopter. Dusty Goat went ahead and got one split off from the other two and uh, we got on him and uh, he, I mean he put me right on this hog he, he uh, got up right beside him and I mean I was shooting right over the skids I had to really watch for that but uh, we got we got right on him and shot him and I mean he went down
Okay, we got on the second one, and uh, uh, he got uh, he got over, got over there by himself, and we got after him, and we chased him right over to a road, and uh, again, Dusty turned the helicopter just right, and, and uh, I shot between the rotors and the skids, and uh, put a good shot on him with him double buck buckshot, and he went down right there in the road. Okay, we got two down, we got one left. Uh, this one was a little tricky. It took us a few minutes to find him. Um, we spotted him and again, we got right on him and uh, got right on top of him and uh, ran him across Sendero and, and got him into some brush and he got out in a little area where we, where we got a good shot on him. And um, we got all three of them and that, that's, a, that's a good thing to get off the ranch. This last hog that we shot, uh, the hog went down in the perfect place for, for Dusty to land the helicopter. And for a couple reasons, uh, I wanted to get some, some good photos on the ground, and I also wanted to mark this hog with my GPS so we could, we could go back and, and, and get him. He, he was a, a nice size, 150 pound boar, uh, a, a really good hog to put in the freezer. You know, getting regrouped and back in the helicopter is usually pretty funny to me. You know, we usually have at least two guns in there, sometimes three cameras, you know, not to mention the boxes of ammo. You got your gloves, your, head, your headset, but everyone is trying to help each other out. Okay, we just got through flying the helicopter and we got got on these three hogs. This is one that we shot that uh, cut through the brush uh, strip there and got over here on this road. So it makes it easy for loading up. Uh, we're doing a little hog management this trip. Uh, we found these three. We've been staying over here and uh, we finally got them, found them, located them in the air. Got this one. This is a medium. This is the middle size when There was three of them. This is a sow. So it's, we're going to take it back. And Cut it up and be some good eating, good pork. After a short break, a can cooker recipe that's simple and easy to fix at Deer Camp. Later on, Scott York slams a big 10 point. We'll be right back. Want more from Closing the Distance? Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Closing the Distance is brought to you by Ozonics. Undetectable, undeniable. Hunter Safety System dedicated to saving hunters' lives. Executioner Broadheads, born to kill. Treason, don't just blend, become. And by Citadel, revolutionary shoot-down shape. Welcome back to Closing the Distance. We were doing a predator hunt and, and a deer senses out of the helicopter. And, and when we do this, there seems like there's always a lot of guys in camp. It, it takes a lot of bodies to get this done. 
And I've seen like I'm all, always the one who's, who's doing a lot of the cooking. And I had a simple and easy can cooker recipe that I wanted to share. I tell you, it, it seems like all the time I'm in charge of cooking for the guys at the deer camp. And I want something that's simple and easy. It tastes really, really good. And it's fast to cook. So what I've got here, i got my can cooker. I've got venison sausage that's already seasoned. So I don't have to do anything with that. I cut up some potatoes. I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper on those. We've got corn on the cob. And I've got a couple bags of shrimp that I'm gonna season. We're gonna put it in the can cooker. This is a simple, easy recipe that everybody likes. It's simple and quick to do. Let's see how it turns out. If you're adding corn on the cob to your can cooker, always just stand the cobs up. It makes them taste just a little bit better. Just a quick tip on using your can cooker, especially if, if you're using it to cook several different foods. We've got corn on the cob, we've got potatoes, we've got shrimp, and we've got sausage. Don't make the mistake of over seasoning each one of these items. You, you can put a little bit of salt and pepper on potatoes, a little bit on the corn on the cob, and just your sausage is, is already seasoned. The shrimp may need just a little bit, but when you mix everything together, sometimes it may come out a little bit too spicy. So just, just pull back a little bit on that seasoning and I guarantee you it, it'll help you out. Almost of all the can cooker recipes, don't forget to add that 16 ounces of liquid. If you're adding shrimp to your can cooker meal, don't forget, you know, the shrimp has been frozen and it's going to add just a little bit more liquid to your can cooker, but that's going to be okay. This big pan of food was simple and easy. It only took about 45 minutes. We had corn on the cob, potato, shrimp and sausage. It fed about six men and it was very, very inexpensive. Coming up, Scott York makes it count on a great buck. We'll be right back. Get a head start on your next trophy buck. Order stand placement advanced techniques today at Closing the Distance. Closing the Distance is made possible by Matthew Solo Camp. Catch us if you can. Tree Limb Quivers. There's only one tree limb quiver. Sword Sights. Sharp Solutions and Aiming. Elusive Wildlife Technologies, taking the elusive out of wildlife. The Stage Deer Attractant, finally a synthetic scent that works. And by the amazing Luminoc. Can your Aeronoc do this? Welcome back to Closing the Distance. Let's check in with Pro Staffer Scott York, a big wide 10 point. Man, it's nice and cool this morning. About 48 degrees opening weekend for archery season, but we're going to do a great setup. We got a north setup, north wind right now. We haven't been in there. I know it's a good setup. We checked everything um, this weekend early on. I'm excited to get in there. We got good bucks going to the, going over to the feed stations near here. I know we can kill a good one this morning. Let's go get it done. Come on. You know, I was getting my confidence up. I've been seeing some pretty good deer. And I tell you what, uh, you know, the second morning of our hunt, I'll tell you, the, the, the weather was great. The sun was coming out and I saw some nice bucks. There was a particular buck that I had my eye on though. Had some good pictures, a couple of photos of a beautiful wide 10 point. just waiting for him to get a little closer for the shot. I just specifically remember this buck working in, working in. Beautiful footage of him coming in in the sunlight. I just remember that, it was very clear. N knew that he was a definite shooter um, when I saw him. I'm just waiting for the shot now, trying to get ready.
That's a good solid shot. That's gonna be a dead deer. That's a beautiful, solid 10 point mature deer. Wow, that have been fast. We haven't been sitting here, I don't know, Chad, maybe 35 minutes. It's early, <laughs> but we got here early. We're gonna go recover our bug. I know I made a good hit on him. Saw blood flying when we reviewed the footage. So he went off to our right this way. So we'll get on the blood trail here in a second. Man, what a beautiful deer. Typical 10 point, wide, wide buck. Good sized body on him. Hey, I'll tell you what, he came out there early. Luckily, we went to the stand early. I did not expect for us to see much till later. But hey, it's opening weekend archery season. These bucks are in that late summer feeding pattern. And then sometimes they're a little more lax. I mean, it's my favorite time to hunt. You, know, you get a little jump on the rifle hunters, and that's always good. But hey, it worked out for us this evening. And he didn't go far. And we pulled him out and we got him. And we made it happen tonight. It's really pretty, really pretty deer. You know, one of the greatest advancements that I think has happened in the hunting industry that has helped all of us become better hunters is this right here, scouting cameras. Uh, they're absolutely amazing. They're absolutely incredible. I don't know how I could hunt without them uh, anymore. But the number one way that they have made me a better hunter is they've made me a more patient hunter. It, it's, it's absolutely incredible when you know what you've got on your property and when you know they're there, it allows you to be more patient in the stand. It allows you to pass up younger deer. It allows you to know what you've really got. You sit in the stand and you hunt differently knowing what you know. And it's an amazing thing and I'm so thankful for it. But you know, it got me to thinking a lot about what the Bible says about life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 that we can know that all things are working together for the good to them that love God, to those that are called according to His purpose. Now here's what the Bible's saying. The Bible's saying that not everything in life is going to go our way. That there's going to be some problems. And just because you know God or just because you have a personal relationship with Christ doesn't mean that we're exempt from the problems and the difficulties of life. But what it is saying is that we know something and that that we know can give us patience in life. We don't have to flip out. We don't have to freak out just because things aren't going our way or just because life takes a difficult turn. We can know that every turn that's taken, God is doing something for our good. God is using it for our good. He's using it to make us better. And when it's all said and done, we're going to be glad that God did what He did. That knowledge gives us patience in life. And uh, I pray that you know that patience and you know what it's like to know God. But if you don't, if you'd like to know more about a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, we'd love to help you do that. Just go to ClosingTheDistance.com and click on the Moment of Truth tab.